In this video, we're going to take a look at using Query Editor to remove old transactions from your dataset in Power BI. We're going to take a look at two examples. One is a very simple filter to just keep the last X months worth of data. The second example will look at something a little bit more complex where we say, yep, we want to keep just the last X months worth of data, but we also want to include any outstanding transactions. This may be a requirement, for example, if you're working with receivables data, you may generally want to filter your data set to say the last 12 months, the last 24 months, but you may have the odd sales invoice that's older than that, that's still outstanding, and you'd want to include those transactions, but not necessarily include all the other older transactions. So in the second part, we'll look, take a look to see how to do that. We're going to do both of these, as I say, using Query Editor. Query Editor is a super tool for manipulating the data as it's loaded into Power BI. It'd be super difficult to do this using DAX, but actually very, very easy to do using M in Query Editor. Firstly, let's take a quick look at our data set. We're looking here at a table in our data set called BI Transplits, which is our transactions table. This is the table that we want to filter and, and keep to a manageable size because every day we'll have new transactions and this table will grow and grow and grow unless we do something about it. So if we look at the bottom left-hand corner, we can see that uh, we've got 57,491 rows of transactions in our data. If we go over to Query Editor, the nice thing about Query Editor and the M language is that it has some very powerful features for manipulating dates. And we're going to take a look at these now. The first example we'll look at is the simple filter. I want to keep the last X number of month data plus the current months. And for that, I don't have to write a single line of code. I can just apply a filter, a date column here. I choose date time filters. If I say in the previous, and I can choose then an option to say in the previous 12 months. Now, a point to note here is that M, which is the language that's used within Query Editor, if we talk about in the previous 12 months, that means up to and including the previous months, but not including the current month. So it's subtly different from the kind of date data add on time intelligence functions that you may be familiar with in DAX. So just bear that in mind. So because of that, we also need to add another clause where we also want to keep transactions that are in the current month as well. So we say keep rows where date is in the previous 12 months or is in months, and then I have an option last month, this month, next month, to different month names, I want to choose this month. So keep the rows where the date is in the previous 12 months or is in the current month. And you can see on the right hand side, it's added a, a step called filtered rows. And I can choose to close and apply. And that should reduce the size of my data set. If you remember, it was 57,491 rows before the filter. And now after the filter has been applied in Query Editor, we can see that it's got 27,748 rows. So it's about half, the data table is about half the size that it was before. Now, if we go over, actually, sorry, if we go back to our agenda, we've done this, okay? So we chose 12 months. Equally, you could choose any other number of months you wanted. You could also to in choose to include future dates if you wanted. The second example is, is a little bit more complex, and I can't use the date filter in Query Editor the same way because I also want to apply a filter on these outstanding transactions. So basically, I want to keep transactions that have an outstanding amount on them. So it's a little bit more complex. And the way we're going to do that is still quite simple, though. So we open up Query Editor. And what I'll do is I'll just remove that last step that we did, because we're going to replace it with a, a new step. So instead now, what I'm going to do is I'm, go I'm going to create a new custom column, as it's called in, in Query Editor. and apply the filter conditions as true or false to that column, and then apply a filter based on true or false uh, to the column to get my reduced data set. That way I can have any number of different com combinations, permutations, 
uh, to my filter and I can build up quite an elaborate filter if I wanted to. So to do that I go add columns, custom column. I can give the column a name if I want to. I'm not going to actually, I don't need to because I'm going to remove the column later on. But uh, now I have to get my hands a little bit dirty and write a little bit of M code, but it's not complex. Okay, I, I can say date is in previous and I can see various options here. I've got is in previous month. That's not what I want on is in previous n months. That's exactly the command I want. And the command takes two arguments. One argument, the first argument is a date time value, which I'm going to take from the date column. And then the number of months, just as a number. And this is not my complete query, but I'm just going to apply that just so that we can see it's added this custom column with true or false values, but it's not the full step that we want. I want to say true if it's in the previous 12 months or in the current month. So date is in current month. How about that? Very nice. I think it's okay. And it's throwing me an error. That's okay. I know what the error is. I've just, just realized I need to tell tell the func function what date I'm talking about, which is this date field here. So that should work without producing an error now. So that's now given me uh, those columns were actually false. They're now true. That's not everything, um, but this should now mirror the condition that we had before. So we're basically saying it's in the current month or it's in the previous month. So let's just take a look at that before we go any further, just to satisfy ourselves. Hit close and apply. Now this time what it's going to do is it's going to reload the full 57,491 rows of my uh, BI transplits table. And it's going to add this calculator column with uh, true or false. Sorry, I, I Call it calculator column. Don't confuse that with DAX. It's a custom column within Query Editor. And if we select that custom column where the value is true, then we should get the same number, the 27,000 odd transactions that we had uh, previously. Okay, so it's loaded the data. And if you go back to our transplits table, we should see there's our new column called custom, and we've got the true false columns in there. Still got 57,491 rows in the data, but if we filter that column just on true, that's now reduced to 27,748, which was exactly what we had in the first step uh, before using our simple wizard-driven uh, filter. Now what we want to do though is we want to add back in all the transactions that are outstanding that may be older. So if we go back and we edit query, we just edit this step to add the additional condition. So, so far we've said date is in previous mo n months. So it's date is in the previous 12 months or date is in the current month. And I also want to say or. Now this time we're not using dates. We're using the outstanding column. And we just want to say outstanding is not zero. that. So what I've done now is I've created a custom column with a, a condition true if the row meets the criteria that I want to keep. So now what I can do is I can add a filter to this column equals true. Now it hasn't shown the false condition. Let's just load more to just to show that it is there. Okay. So what I want to do is I just want to keep those rows that are true. So I've added a new filtered rows step. And I don't particularly want this column in my model, this column saying custom. So now I've used it and applied the filter, I can actually get rid of it. So I can then choose to remove column. You see it's added a step to remove column. So there are three steps I've added. I've added the custom column, which was creating the filters, filter conditions in the first place, uh, or the logical conditions, and then applying the filter to the logical condition, then removing the custom column. So 
I haven't grown my table in terms of the number of columns that I've got. And I can choose Close and Apply. And previously I had 27,748 rows. If I just looked at the last 12 months and the current months. And now by re-including, as it were, the older transactions that have an outstanding balance, my 27,748 rows has gone up to 27,762. So very simply, if you are working with accounting data and you have a lot of transactions and you want, want to reduce the size of your transaction set and stop it from growing as, as you re refresh your, your data set, you can take some very simple steps using Query Editor to remove old transactions. You can just define the filters that you want. You can either define a more complex filter where you have a, a number of d different conditions to apply or without writing any code at all you can just say keep the last x months worth of data.